What up, what up, what up, Mattle Bees? Today we decided that we were gonna do a full proper garden tour for you. We got a few requests for it, so we decided we'll just walk you through everything so that you know everything that's going on, and also just because I want to show it off. So we go through this gate here. <laughs> Come on in. Over to our left, we have our banana tree, which guys, like a month or so ago, we planted it, and it was about this tall. But in Texas, it's been raining so much that this thing has shot up and is now taller than I am, which, I mean, honestly, you don't have to be that tall to be taller than I am. But this is probably what we're most proud of, or at least what I'm most proud of in the garden right now. And then we keep walking this way, and we have our fig tree, which, we honestly just kind of water this. It came with the house, but it's super cool because if you look closely, you can see that we have figs like everywhere. This tree is covered in so many figs uh, and we'll chop them up, make fig newtons. They're not ripe yet, but it's nice to know that, you know, they're doing well. They're growing like crazy. We keep going. This is basically like Tree Avenue. This tree, we think it's a cherry tree, but honestly, we've never seen it produce anything, but it likes to get all like green and fuzzy when it is time for everything to be growing. So we haven't cut it down or anything just yet. We'll see if it ends up producing. And then this tree here is our pomegranate tree. So I'm really not the biggest fan of pomegranates. Like I didn't grow up on pomegranates or anything, but this tree has produced before and you could actually see like, some of the pomegranate carcasses on the ground next to it. This tree is really good for feeding the squirrels. The fruit has never fully gotten ripe enough for us to actually consume, but when it's like growing and almost ripe enough, the squirrels will come rip them off and we'll see like pomegranates on the roof, pomegranates on the ground. So this is our pomegranate tree. I'm taking over from here for a little bit because Madison actually doesn't know everything that's in the garden. I just came home with this last week, so that's understandable. This is a Moringa tree, which is an incredibly nutritious, like, green, which is kind of cool because it's a tree. So it's like a green that you can grow long-term. Um, what's the word? Permaculture, a type of green that can be permanent in your garden. So I'm very excited to have found this at a local nursery last week. If we keep coming, this little patch right here is kind of taking taking a turn right now. Oh, look, a feather. <laughs> yeah. But this bed right here was meant to be for pollinators. And you can see there's a a bee just landing on that right there. Anyway, so I planted right here a bunch of flowers basically for pollinators to come in and be able to enjoy the garden as well. Very important to gardening to have some bee friends around. And we also have uh, what you call a volunteer tomato plant. I didn't plant a tomato right here, but um, one shot up. So we also have a random tomato growing in this flower bed. More flowers here, again, all good for the pollinators. That's what all this stuff is. This is called borage, and it's taking a bit of a hit right now from the heat. It kind of, it's kind of falling over. Might need to stake that up, but the bees love all of this. And my most proud sunflower so far has already flowered and kind of started to die. So I'll show you how big this head is. And it uh, might be ready to almost, almost ready to harvest the seeds in there, but I'm very proud of this. And more sunflowers. There's a bee friend up there now, but he's so high, you can't see him. But these are called, um, I believe these are mammoth sunflowers. They're supposed to have bigger heads, but I think because of this tree, they didn't get enough light to get too big, uh, but also very proud of those. All right, tagging back in here to talk a little bit about our chicken coop. So it's actually more of a chicken condo or a chicken penthouse right now. Originally, we only had this section of it built out. And mind you, they're around here somewhere, but we only have two chickens. So this is their entire setup for two of them. Their little coop area is right here, and then we've kind of built them out a run. As you can see, Shelby thought of the awesome idea of like turning this space into an area where we could plant stuff because when we first got them, we didn't realize how much chickens like to jump and like get in your garden and stuff. So having stuff planted out here is really awesome so that they don't mess with things. 
And then they have this area here where they can kind of run and play. There's a little mirror in there so that they can look at themselves because chickens like to do that. Then this area has another little uh, coop where they can lay their eggs and just kind of hang out. And then Shelby, <laughs> Shelby has a recent addition where she's added a fan for them in here. So that's what you hear there. It's actually solar powered and is to help the chickens out in the summertime when it gets really hot outside. Besides that, you have your standard like feed and then watering station. And then we've also made a lot of improvements because we've been battling predators. Some of those improvements include at night, there are lights that Shelby has installed. They're all solar lights, but they're supposed to mimic predators. So they're like little red lights that kind of shoot back and forth. This is another light that's supposed to warn off predators. We have rocks here and there to kind of keep the predators out too. And then our most recent addition has actually been, it was a team effort, but we had a bunch of people come and lift this up. And then we put chicken wire under this and kind of buried it so that when the raccoons and such are trying to get in, they actually have to dig to try to get under the coop. So that is our chicken suite. There's a couple bags before we get to the main garden bed where obviously a lot is happening. But this is just a bag that where we're growing peanuts. So we'll see how that goes. This is my first time ever attempting to grow them and they're growing really, really well. They've gotten big. So you can't see what they look like until you pull them out of the ground because they grow kind of like potatoes under the earth. So one day soon we'll know what they look like. But right now I have no idea. Um, this is just another pollinator plant. but. First thing you see in this part of the, the main garden bed is all of our tomatoes. These are cherry tomatoes. And if you come up in here, you can see that it's kind of taking over and they're everywhere, which is great. You love to, you love for your crops to like, you know, do well. But this is just two plants and it's taken over the majority of the entire garden bed. And, and it's only June. So this is going to get even bigger. I've tried to attach it to this uh, trellis so that hopefully this can help support it because it's getting out of hand over here. If you come through said trellis, this was basically built so that we could grow pumpkins up it. Um, but the rain that happened in Texas this year, we got so much that the flowers kept rotting off of my squash plants. So I'm gonna have to replant them in hopes to have them over this by, you know, the end of summer. And these are strawberry plants. These did much better when it wasn't so warm, closer into the spring. Uh, they're probably reaching the end of their life now, but they're still producing, you know, some fruit. And this over here, well, I have some sunflowers drying. And then this is called a nasturtium plant. Uh, it's supposed to help keep squash bugs away, or it's more like a trap plant so that squash bugs will eat that or lay their eggs on that instead of your actual squash plants. Because last year we had a serious squash bug problem. And then obviously you can tell what corn looks like. Most people can. This is definitely corn growing here in our garden. And everybody in my household has been harassing me to remove this corn for, I don't know, a week or two. So I decided that in honor of this uh, tour that we're doing, I'll remove this corn for you. And you can see it and we will, we will open it up. It might, it definitely has been on there a little longer than like ideal, but it's probably still fine. Corn is one of the most resilient freaking crops. And there you have it, a little corn that I grew here in the garden. Thought that would be a great addition to the video. But yes, corn, uh, there's some beans in here and more corn sprouting because it is a heat loving plant so we can keep it going. And then there are four watermelon plants in here. One of them is making their way up this trellis, which is obviously what said trellis is for. I think I planted this, whatever it is, I'm not sure, but um, I think it's morning glory though I am unsure, but it's growing like a weed up the trellis, so I'm here for it. Hello, girls. <laughs> okay. In addition to the watermelon plants, we have a few pepper plants in here. This is a Serrano. I'm leaving them on the vine until they turn red because I'm attempting to make my own Sriracha. So we're leaving that there. And then we've got more. If you come into here, you can see, I'll cut one off so you can see it actually. <laughs> This is a shishito pepper. These are really good if you just put salt um, and olive oil and put them in the air fryer. These are so, so good. So that's what's growing in this bed mainly. There's also a blackberry bush. 
we're trying to see how that does and uh yeah that's this bed and then the last bed has um been where we've been seeding things we've been planting seeds and letting them grow but the biggest plant the only plant really that's in here is my cucumber plant and then it sits on this trellis with the chair in the middle which i think is beautiful but uh, if you come over here you can actually see one of my cucumbers growing these are um a small cucumber variety they were called baby cucumbers so they don't get too big this one's honestly probably ready to pick um, so I might do that a little bit later today, but we've got another one up here coming in and there's a couple uh, babies here on this so that is uh, That's these two beds and all that good stuff This bed here is honestly just chickpeas and I took the uh, ability to try and make this so that's why it looks a little janky, but Chickpeas in this bed here, and then on top of our rain barrel here, we just have a bunch of flowers. We literally took a flower mix and just kind of sprayed it in there. The reason they're so small is because their roots can't get that deep. Like the, the bottom of like this specific part only goes to like right here, and then it kind of sits in the water. So the roots can't like sprawl out like it would if it was in the ground. And then last but not least, we have our chickens here. Valentina is the one on the right here, and then Douglas is the one on the left. They're actually Rhode Island Reds that we got from our local sanctuary, so they're rescue chickens. Uh, they've been an awesome addition to the garden. They walk around, they poop a lot. Uh, so their poop is actually good for our compost and like helping stuff grow around the garden. And then also they scratch at things like constantly during the day. So that helps the garden by, you know, keeping everything pest-ish free. So they help out a lot with that. Uh, we love our girls and they're just back there living their best lives. All right, guys. Well, that's the end of our tour. Thanks for hanging out with us today. I hope you all enjoyed it. If you did, go ahead and follow our vlog channel for more content like this. We're always out in the backyard doing stuff. I hope you all enjoyed. And until next time, catch you later, Maddlebees. <laughs>